Uh, very pleased to welcome uh, the leader of the Social Democratic Party, William Clouston. Uh, morning, William. Morning. Kind of you to have me back on. Thank you. Uh, um, now, uh, what do you feel now? We've got a lockdown going on. Uh, hand on heart, I really hope it works. I cannot, for the life of me, William, understand why so many people seem to think or seem to be sure it will work. Uh, we've had nine months of this. We had the big lockdown in the summer. We've since then, we had the full lockdown in November. In Wales, they had the fire break, the three week fire break in October, which culminated in Merthyr Tidville having the highest infection rate in the country. We've had tears, one, two, three, four. They're talking about five. We've got another lockdown. Look at the state of the nation now. Look at the soaring death rate, the rocketing number of cases, the NHS on the edge of a precipice, an abyss, staring into the abyss of being overwhelmed. Uh, and I'm supposed to look back and say, well, I must say these policies have been very effective in stopping the virus. Why? Uh, and I know you're sort of on the same page as me, William. Why are people like you and I demonised for uh, asking the question, have these policies been effective in any way so far? Why are we demonised as sort of cranks and lunatics? It, it's the only logical response isn't it um yeah some of the re the recent um uh pushback against some people that have argued uh for a more rational approach to public policy i mean it's been interesting isn't it because all all certainly from our point of view as a party all we've ever wanted from the start was for public policy to be um to have some sort of rational basis uh you know so if you're going to put suppression measures into place you want to uh, be sure they'll work firstly, but also you need to um, quantify and assess the costs and effects of those suppression measures anyway. So, you, you know, you can't, my, my criticism of government policy from the very start, and we did support the first lockdown, yep. um, was that they never even tried to quantify and assess the effects, uh, human and economic, of the measures that were putting in place. Okay, so they're never going to do that, Kevin. You know, we're we're now at the hopefully the final stage, and I think to some extent, actually, whatever we say on our side uh, is moot because I think three things, uh, three recent events, relatively recent events, have made it much more difficult. Um, if you want, if your aim is to try and get the government to to tack or change policy, uh, forget it because the the three things are basically the the um, emergence of the mutant strain. A virulent strain um, that that has changed things. Uh, the fact that we've, we're coming into we came into the second bloom of this um, viral epidemic is it bloomed towards the start of the winter, which is the epidemic, you know, the the flu season anyway. And thirdly, the big factor is that we appear to be on the last. Uh, you know, you could see light at the end of the tunnel because of the the vaccine rollout. Um, and so I think largely. Uh, it's moot. I mean, the government's not going to change its policy. No. Um, and and honestly, we all we all, we need to all of us be optimistic and hope that the the vaccine rollout works and is is uh, effective. Certainly, family members that have you know have had the vaccine and actually have family members responsible for ministry you know giving it out. Yeah. It has actually been quite uh, astonishingly effective. I know it's been patchy, but. Um, you know, some of the rollout has been highly efficient. People have turned up and had their jab on time, uh, you know, and it's been all organized very well. So, you know, I, I mean, I think we're heading to a stage now where we've just got to all hope for the best, yeah. hope this, this works. And there will be an inquiry one day. Uh, into yeah, you're right about yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Into <laughs> it's going to be the mother and father of all uh, public inquiries. Uh, but uh, you know, I just find it uh, frustrating that you know the moment Boris brings in this latest tough new lockdown, the sage lot stand up and say, "Well, the measures aren't tough enough." As I say, I feel they're almost getting their excuses in uh, early to explain why this won't work. Oh, well, they weren't tough enough. Oh, well, they were rule breakers. Well, we cannot go on like this. Uh, but as you say, uh, this latest lockdown, uh, uh, you know, we're going to have to go along with it. 
Uh, and hopefully in conjunction with the rollout of the vaccines, which we hope will be efficient and they'll meet this target of two million a week, uh, that the combination of the two will start to take an effect. So, yeah, fingers crossed uh, we will get out of this with the help of the vaccine. Uh, but I do worry about uh, the way people like you and uh, sorry, people like me and probably you have been shouted down as if we're sort of crazy COVID deniers. We're not COVID deniers. We are just doubting the effectiveness of lockdowns uh, so far. And we are worried about the ramifications of lockdowns. You know, the other effects of it, you know, the effect on the economy, the effect on businesses, people losing their jobs, mental health, suicide rates. All these factors are worth thinking about. And I do not like the fact there seems to be this concern concerted effort to shout the likes of you and me down when we're just making a perfectly logical point. We are not COVID deniers. There's a difference. Uh, talking of freedom, what do you think, William, now of the police is clear hard line uh, crackdown on uh, the rule breakers, uh, anyone. I mean, even even people who go for a walk and sit on a bench and have a cup of coffee seem to be getting arrested and fined £200. Do you think this is over the top? Do you think uh, our freedoms uh, are at risk here? Um, yeah, I mean, there have been two, there have been basically two um, cases against draconian lockdowns from the start. You know, the, the, some people have emphasised uh, liberty and freedom. You know, Peter Hitchens, Lawrence Fox have, have done that. Uh, actually, our, our objection to it really from the start was utilitarian. We we felt that the measures, the effects of the measures, as I said, probably uh, could well um, result in more um, cost to humanity and pain than the than the plus side. And that's that's really what what our case has been built on from the start. But yeah, I mean the case in Leicestershire and so on of of a, a couple of uh, people walking five miles from their home mm. and being arrested and fined. Uh, seems to be a lack of common sense there, really. I mean, and, and I, I, please correct me if I'm wrong, but I've read the uh, regulations and you are allowed to take exercise in your locality. And uh, I'm not sure that five miles isn't within your locality. So I'm not sure. Some of the legal basis for some of these things uh, is a little odd. I mean, I, I just I just plea for common sense. You know, I mean, yes. don't do anything that you think will will has any prospect of, of spreading this virus. Mm. Use your common sense. But that applies both ways. You know, if someone's sitting on their own on a park bench, uh, I can't really see how, how that could cause a problem. But as I say, I mean, you know, the, the, there'll be a, a long uh, assessment uh, after all this is, is finished and, and on lockdowns and things. And as I say, the only meta study I've uh, seen, which is the one published in Frontiers in Public Health, said that there wasn't, a, wasn't a, a link between uh, the stringency of lockdowns and death rates, actually. So we'll see. I mean, they may be getting there excuses in I, I don't know uh, you know as I say the point really is moot I, I think what we all need to do uh, as a country actually now is to is to you know come together a little bit more uh, you know and, and you know every every morning is getting a little lighter uh, you know we've got to hope that by March and April you know several you know tens of millions of people have been vaccinated and gets this economy yeah. on and actually Kevin the other thing is that we we are doing reasonably well touch wood on the rollout and uh, I agree, you know I agree yeah Last, the last thing in the world, uh, William, I want to do is to start criticising the vaccine rollout before it's even really taken off. So yeah. uh, all I'm doing, uh, and I'm sure you are too, is I'm keeping my fingers crossed. Uh, the army are involved, uh, that it will be efficient. Boris will meet his two million a week target and we begin to chart a pathway out of uh, this nightmare we've been in now for nine months. So I'm, I'm not being negative yeah. about that. Yeah. No, I don't think any of us should be. And I think I think we, you know, and I, 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 some of the, the there isn't any need for division on some of this stuff. I mean, you know, it's, it's in, a, in a modern democracy, um, a little bit of kickback and challenge yeah. to what have been unprecedented uh, public measures uh, is necessary. But as I say, I, I you know, I, I, I think rationally, I, I'm not saying anything that isn't, you know, pretty firmly based in Mm. in evidence of nationality. I mean, you know, the, the, the way we allocate um, health spending in this country through NICE is, is on a rational basis of, you know, quality adjusted life years. And I, I've, you know, if, 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 a, if a life year is, is quanti you know, qualified as, as you know, you know if, if, the, if the government spend £15,000 a year on a quality, 
and have an upper limit of something like 30,000, then it would seem to me to be slightly irrational if they suddenly start spending a million. That's, yeah. that's yeah. the only point I've yeah. made. Yeah, I mean, on a general, to sort of summarise uh, what I, I feel, I had uh, Lord Jonathan's assumption on my show on Friday night, and he <laughs> he believes, uh, you know, that the balance is wrong and that lockdowns do more harm than good. They are more harmful uh, and will be more harmful in the long run than the actual disease. That's uh, what I believe. Yeah, uh, and uh, that's what I believe as well. But I, I do not like the fact that uh, me, you, and a former Supreme Court judge are being demonised uh, as sort of COVID deniers. That's a very, very different thing to be. Lockdown scepticism is is a logical response to nine months of lockdowns that clearly have so far not worked. Um, uh, but as I say, with the vaccine, let's hope this one does. I'm going to keep my fingers crossed. I'm not convinced, but uh, let's try to be optimistic. Uh, uh, Lord Sumption also pointed out that uh, the police forces are all saying, uh, well, uh, jurisdiction of the laws is all down to the PCs on the beat. Uh, Lord Sumption, as, as a former Supreme Court judge in charge of the law, said, oh, no, it's not. It is that's absolutely wrong. Uh, it is not up to the PCs on the beat. It is up to what the law is. And it may be that when they decide to fine people 200 quid for having a cup of coffee on a park bench, that they are uh, outside of the law. So that's another area that's going to have to be looked into. Uh, just before you go, uh, William, I keep promising you this, so here's your chance. Can you explain to the listeners uh, exactly what the Social Democratic Party is all about? Well, the, the, SD, the current resurgence of the SDP is based on, a, on an idea that there's something basically missing in our politics, uh, something missing on the political landscape. If you look out, and you see the Conservative Party and the Labour Party and the sort of incoherent Lib Dems. No one knows what they believe. Um, probably several things at one time. Uh, and, and are they still to... around? There's only about six yeah, of them left on. <laughs> they are. Um, you know, and, uh, and, and people go into polling booths and honestly, they're desperate for a, for a better alternative. Yep. And, and our particular type of politics is quite distinctive, but it has very, very wide appeal. Um, uh, we, you know, we're patriotic, we're culturally traditional. Uh, and our economics is left leaning. And so if you if you like that combination, uh, then, you know, check us out on sdp.org and and we're growing quickly. And I think it's it's it's, it's because there is a need uh, for an alternative. And as I say, if you think we're well governed, then you haven't been paying any attention. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I've got my doubts about that. Uh, William, uh, thank you so much for your time on a Sunday morning. We will talk again soon. Uh, that's William Clouston. He's the uh, leader of the Social Democratic Party. Uh, the SDP, resurgent. Uh, have a look at, uh, at uh, their website and see what you think. No one is telling you what to think, uh, but uh, we are encouraging you to look at all information and make up your own minds about everything. Do not be told what to think. I'm Kevin O'Sullivan, and this is the home of free speech.